and to share some thoughts on dreams and the dreamer. I was once interested in dreams and went to an analyst on dreams. He had a lot of gadgetry and wires like this. He said when a person dreams, he can fix them all up on the head, on the eyes, and through the study of the EEG and the study of the REM, he could tell exactly what kind of dream a person was having. It almost looks you have hooked me up to experiment with my dreams. The rapid eye movements on a person's physical body are sufficiently significant to understand if the person is asleep and having dreams. This has been observed over and over again. You can watch a person who is dreaming and see the movement of the eyes. If the eyelids are doing like this, which means that the eyeballs under the eyelids are moving in a vertical direction, you wake up the person. You say, what were you dreaming? And the person will say, I was jumping up in a baseball game or I was seeing a waterfall. Something involving action in the vertical direction. If you see the eyelid of a person who is sleeping, moving in the horizontal direction, and you wake up that person and ask, what were you dreaming? And the person will describe a tennis match or something going fast, a train moving, some action in a horizontal direction. What does it mean? It means dreams as an experience of consciousness affect the physical body. And therefore, by watching the physical body, you can have some idea of the dreams of a person. Many people did not realize that there was such an intimate connection between dreams and the physical body. The reason for assuming that there was no connection between dreams and the physical body was that every time any human being went to sleep and dreamt, that person had to create a new body to dream. Nobody could ever take this body into a dream. There was always a new body similar to this, sometimes not similar. There are people, young people, who dream that they are very old. There are human beings who dream that they are birds and they fly. It is not necessary that the dream body is of the same shape or appearance as the physical body, but some container, some body, some vehicle is invariably created by a person who is dreaming. That dream body which moves about in the dream world is not the same body. And yet, that dream body moves about in relationship to the physical body. If a person is sleeping and you put your hand on the head of that person and wake him up and ask him what he was dreaming, he will say, a strange dream, I passed through a valley and suddenly a rock fell right on my head. What is the connection? The placing of the hand on the physical body was enough to enter into the existing pattern of the dream, to become a rock falling on the head of that person in the dream. You let a person sleep in a bed with a pillow on that side and the feet on this side and make two or three people in different colored dresses move up and down, even in darkness, and then wake up that person immediately after that and say, what were you dreaming? See, it's a strange dream. There were blue colored and yellow colored angels that came before. You suddenly find that was the dress of the persons who walk up and down. Why did I say put the pillow beside? Because when a person dreams, he does not keep his physical eyes fully closed. Keep little ports open. And the input from the physical world is going and making a pattern in the dream world. If a person does not have any such external influence, is sleeping peacefully in a darkened room with no interference, no disturbance, and you wake up that person and say, what were you dreaming? And the person will say, I dreamt that I saw Peter Morris and I was very mad at him and I almost hit him. You say, why did you dream like that? And you ask him, what happened yesterday, day before yesterday? When did you really meet Peter Morris? He said, I met him in his office last week. He was very mad at me in an unjustified way. That last week's incident in the physical world created a pattern for the dream a week later at night. What I am trying to say is, that although this body does not go into the dream world at all, the incidents connected with this body, the working of this body, affects the pattern of dream that you can have. So it is very strange that a dream body should look as real to a person when dreaming as the physical body looks when we are awake. It is very strange because that body is not real. Because we take that body as our body in a dream, therefore the dream looks real. Supposing 
somebody had this control over dreams and could go to sleep and say, this is not my body. I know this is just a dream body. That's not me. Me is sleeping out in bed and recalls the body that is sleeping. This is not me. Me sleeping. The old dream will become dreamlike and unreal. That means to make a dream look real, you must first accept the dream body as real. If you do not take the dream body as real, the dream does, does not become real. But once you take the dream body as real, the rest of the dream must be taken as real. What makes a dream look real while we are dreaming is the fact that we take the new vehicle, the new form in which our consciousness is operating as real. We identify ourselves with the dream body, thereby making the dream real. If this is really true, the question is, is it a fact that because we are taking these physical bodies as real, therefore we are taking the physical world as real? Is it possible that this physical world which we are experiencing around us is also a dream and it looks so real merely because we are taking ourselves to be the physical body? Maybe we are sleeping in some other body and this physical body is merely being created for this dream. And therefore, the whole physical world is looking real. How can we answer this question? If we ask this question to ourselves, am I taking this world to be real because I am taking myself to be real in the physical body? How can we get an answer? Go back to the dream at night. If while dreaming at night, we want to ask this question, is this dream real or unreal? And we put this question, is my body real? Am I taking the dream as real? So long as that body is taken as real, you have no one to ask this question. Who will you ask this question? You are sleeping, having a dream. In the dream, you meet many people. At best, you can ask them. If I meet Peter Morris in my dream, I will say, Peter, I remember a lecture I gave some time ago. I don't know when and where. But I know I touched upon the subject of dreams. I want to be sure if this body I am having is really a dream body and that is what is making you and the dream look real. Peter, tell me the truth. Peter will say, don't be stupid. We are real. Otherwise, how can we talk to each other? And after a few minutes, I may wake up. And I will wake up and find neither my body was real, nor I was real, nor Peter was real, nor the discussion was real. It all took place in my head just because I dreamt like that. That I made a fatal mistake in my inquiry when I began to investigate the reality of a dream by asking the dream person. But that is what we do in the physical world. We want to question, are we now having a dream or is it real? How can we get an answer? We go about asking the very people who are part of the dream. Do you think this is a dream? This is, of course not. This is faithfulness. This is real. You don't believe it? Touch these things. See these things. They give all the sensory verification of the experience at the same level, what we call physical wakefulness, and say, therefore, we are awake and real. What is the proof whether we are awake or dreaming? What is the proof if this body we are having now is a dream body or a real body? Because when we go to sleep at night and have a dream, that dream body looks as real while the dreaming is, dreaming is going on as this one. And the whole dream looks as real as this world while the dream is going on. The only time when it doesn't look real is when we wake up. When we wake up automatically, at once, spontaneously, without inquiry, without investigation, it becomes a dream. Unreal. Every time we wake up from a dream, the dream becomes unreal. And we say, that was just a dream. It wasn't real. It was all in my head. Is it possible that we might wake up? From where we are now, what would happen if suddenly we woke up and found all these people whom we gave names, with whom we played games, with whom we made discussions, and the big societies we set up to investigate dreams, investigate reality, were all part of one big dream. There was no way of finding out. And when we wake up to the higher reality, we find that the world we experienced as real was not where we experienced it, it was in our head. Just like when we go to sleep and have a dream, the dream world that we see spread out all over in our head, not outside. That is not the only strangeness about a dream. The more wonderful and strange thing is, it was 
person can dream for a short while and have a very long dream. In experiments on sleep and dream conducted by the psychic society in India, and also some experiments conducted here in the 60s, in which I was a participant, it was found that a person may sleep for a few minutes and have a dream of several years. In fact, they recorded the actual dream sequence and dream experience of a person who dreamt that he was born in a small family, out in a small town, grew up there, had a lot of problems with children, with brothers, with parents, ran away from there, found a girl in the city, married her, grew up, had children, grew very old, married the children, had grandchildren, and was very old, when he was about to die, he woke up. And it was 14 minutes later that all happened. The whole sequence of the entire life took place in 14 minutes by the watch in the physical world. How can a whole lifetime be fitted into 14 minutes of mental experience which we call a dream? Is it then possible if we now say in the physical world that man lived to be 60 years, that man lived to be 75 years, look how long I have lived, I can remember, I have already lived 60 years, I may live another 20, another 30, and it may all be a matter of 15 minutes in a higher rate full set. How do we know? What is the truth? How can one find out the validity of these statements? One way we all know. And let us accept that. One way is a certain way of knowing the validity of a statement about a dream. That is, if you wake up, you will know. That is a certain way. That is so certain that nobody can question it. When a person wakes up in the morning, nobody can confuse you. If you wake up in the morning, nobody can come and confuse you. You are still sleeping. Nobody can say you are still dreaming. People may say, but you know it. Your knowledge is based upon the strange device that is fitted into consciousness called memory. Memory is a great thing because when we wake up in the morning, the memory links up with last night. The memory gives us an immediate information about the time when we went to sleep. Just because we remember we went to sleep, we know instantly the intervening experience for the dream. Supposing we had no memory. Supposing we woke up in the morning without remembering that we went to sleep, we will never be able to know the difference between a dream and a waking state. Have examined that? Have examined this proposition? Not only is it a proposition, we have mental cases of insomnia, of such cases of insomnia, such cases of sleeplessness, such cases of amnesia combined with insomnia, that people dream, wake up, dream, and can never distinguish the two. Sometimes you call it what is schizophrenia. People who have two personalities, there is no personality. They just pass into a dream state without adequate memory of the sleeping. Therefore, they cannot distinguish between the dream and the wakeful state. They cannot distinguish between the fantasy in the mind and the fantasy as an input from experience outside. Therefore, the only good healthy thing normal ordinary human beings have is when they wake up in the morning, they remember they went to sleep. Very great safeguard against living in a dream world. Otherwise, nobody would ever know when we are awake, when we are not. All experiences will become the same. So, in the morning, waking up with the recollection that we went to sleep makes the intervening experience a dream. Could it then be possible that if we woke up from the physical state one day, to a super conscious state. We woke up and found we were always somewhere else. This intervening period, which we thought was physical wakefulness in a real physical world, was nothing more than a very superior kind of dream. This is quite possible. Can someone really help us to know this? Someone really, a friend who can really help us. We don't want to know it in the natural sense. Maybe when we die in the physical body, we wake up into a higher level of consciousness. We can't come and tell anybody else. We can't even be sure ourselves. Can somebody interrupt, interrupt our dream and tell us you are dreaming and we remember? In the examples I am giving you, I am constantly saying, if the eyelids are moving, if the rapid eye movement in one direction, wake up the person and ask him about the dream. If a person is restless, wake up the person and ask him. If a person is shown something with half eyelids closed, wake up that person and ask him. Why am I saying wake up the person? Why not wait till the person wakes up? Because when you wait for the person to wake up, he forgets. Do you know such few dreams are remembered? 
Do you know what is the percentage of dream remembered? Not even 0.01 percent. 99.9 percent of dreams are forgotten. Why? Because there is a system to pull up the memory of the previous wakeful state, the intervening one must fade away. Almost instantaneously. We all do it. When we wake up in the morning, we know from which dream we are coming. Instantly. And within seconds, it fades out. And we notice that. Within seconds. In five seconds, you cannot say what you dreamt. If you are sleeping at night and having a dream which can be seen by your rapid eye movement, you are woken up, you will tell your dream, you will be put to sleep again, wake up in the morning, you will neither remember the dream nor the fact that you woke up and told the dream. There were thousands and thousands of cases on that. Therefore, it looks like dream world or a self-created mental world is a separate type of life into which we go all the time in order to come back to wakefulness. Why do we need So many questions are being asked. The sleep scientists, scientists who are examining the nature of sleep, they say it is necessary. Otherwise, the pressure of wakefulness can be too much for us to bear. Did you ever imagine that? People want to be awake all the time. Let us awake. Let us go to higher wakeful state. Do they ever realize that they cannot stand wakefulness beyond a point? Even in this physical body, we cannot stand wakefulness beyond a point. When we cannot stand wakefulness and the pressure of wakefulness beyond a point, we want to go to sleep. We are tired. We go to another world. And we want to forget that world as soon as we have done our job of disconnecting ourselves from the wakeful world by creating a dream world and coming back into this world. This world looks so real because we are comparing it constantly to the dream world. If we had some other world to compare it with, it may not look so real. But we have lower point of reference. I was thinking, if we could really be awakened in the middle of the dream, somebody could just wake us up and tell us, now this was a dream, this is wakefulness, now go to sleep. But at least you know, we will sleep in this physical state. How can somebody do it? Let us go back to the dream at night. If I want to be awakened in the middle of the night and be informed of my dream state and what I am dreaming, what will I do? I will tell a friend of mine who is already awake, who is not sleeping. I cannot tell a person who is sleeping to wake me up. I can tell a person who is awake while I am sleeping. If I am sleeping, my friend is awake, he can nudge me in the middle of the dream. When he notices I am sleeping, he will nudge me in the side. Get up, get up, and get up. Now you see, that was just a dream. Now we are awake. Is there a possibility? Is there then a possibility to have a friend now, who is awake to a higher level of wakefulness than the physical light we are thinking to be real, who can nudge us in the middle and who can wake up to a higher level of reality in the middle of our dream, must be possible. There are such people. They are awake. They are awake and they can see who is sleeping and who is not. Because our dream here is being created in our own mind. Which mind? Not in this head. In the head of the body that is sleeping. Let's give that body a name not to confuse it with the physical body. Let us call this body as a physical body. Let us call the body that we create for ourselves in the dream that night as the dream body. And let us call the body into which we can take up further above the physical life as the astral body. I will explain to you presently why I want to use the word astral body. If we can be nudged in the physical body to awaken to the real body in which we are sleeping, in the head of which we are creating this dream, if that astral body can wake up by another friend of ours who is already awake in the astral body, we would know, oh, so what we thought was a physical world was really not real, it was the same nature as any other dream. Such people who are awakened to a higher level of wakefulness, a higher level of consciousness and the physical, we call as masters. Who are spiritual masters? We talk of spiritual masters. Spiritual masters are no more than awakened people who know we are sleeping and they can nudge us while we are sleeping and awaken us to higher reality. What happens if while we are dreaming, a person nudges us? I already mentioned that what happens to the physical body in a dream affects the dream sequence. If I am fond of horses and I am dreaming that my horses are running away and I am trying to catch my horses, and they are trying to run away and trying to catch my horses and bring them back to the stable. 
At that time, Peter Morris was away. He nudges me. Get up, get up. Now, I can hear his voice. It looks like Peter is coming from behind the stables and saying, get up, get up. I will tell him in the dream, but what about my horses? So, by that time, I am already half awake because I start speaking, murmuring in the physical body. So, he nudged me in the physical body. My physical body will start saying in half sleep, oh, what about my horses? He can hear me speaking. What about my horses? He knows I am dreaming of horses. That is why I say, what about my horses? I am seeing the horses actually as if they are real in the dream. Peter says to me, don't worry, I will hold your horses. Give me the horses, I will hold them. He saying it in a physical wakeful state and in the dream state. I say, thank you. That security that he is going to hold the horses builds up enough security for my dream sequence of trying to hold the horses to be broken into my wakefulness. Understand this very carefully. Because that is how, very successfully, you can waken a person in the middle of the night when he is dreaming. Nudge him. If he is dreaming, enter into his dream, give him the security, let him up. I like Gio Shetty Pizza. Pizza parlor is not too far away. I always my mind goes to, at night I will be dreaming and there enjoying the pizza, the cheese, mushrooms, whatever, all the topics. And just when I am about to eat, my friend decides to wake me up. And I say, let me finish my pizza. And this comes up into the physical world. When I speak, friend who can see no pizza, he says, I will hold your pizza for you. Set up. And I wake up. You can try any number of times. When you give security to a person about the incomplete desire, wish or action of a dream, when you give security to the person, the person becomes needed. Because the apprehension of the desire through which the dream sequence is being created gets interrupted and you can wake to higher place by the nudging of a friend who is already awake. You will never ask that friend after you wake up, where are my horses? Where is my pizza? You will never say, you are a liar. You told me you are going to take care of my horses. You are a liar. You said you will save my pizza. You will know precisely that these statements were made by the friend who was awakened in order to enter into our dream space to wake up. These masters who are awake in a higher level of consciousness, they nudge us in our higher wakeful body, enter into our dream sequence, appear as ordinary persons like us, participate in a conversation with us here, give us the security against the apprehension and the desire and unfinished business which is constituting this and enable us to wake into a higher level of consciousness. As we could say. And we understand their real form, their real nature, their real state of wakefulness only when we awake. We even understand that we were sleeping and dreaming only when we awake. There is no way of knowing it otherwise. Therefore, when we awake, we find out that we created the dream ourselves. But why do we create such bad, ugly dreams? If we want to create dreams and they are all in our own mind, why don't we create nice, good, happy dreams? If this world is really dreamlike, if our reality is a higher state of wakefulness and we are going to sleep there to come into this world and we are in a state of dreaming, why didn't we set up some nice dreams? Most of us seem to have set up nightmares. We created so much misery for ourselves, we created problems for ourselves, conflicts for ourselves, trouble with people, bad relationships. Why? If we had a choice to make our own dreams, how did we land up in this mess? The answer is simple. Go back again to how the dreams are created at night. Dreams are not being arbitrarily created. Dreams are merely a reaction to earlier action. Dreams are merely a reaction to previous dreams. Look at the nature of dreams. Study the dream pattern continuously and you will find how every dream can be explained fully in relationship to past wakeful action or past dream action. Every dream. As if it is a continuing game of one set of experiencing experiences leading to another set of experiences. These masters have said, this is precisely how we create not only the dreams at night, even this dream which we call the wakeful state. And they call this particular recurrence of a sequence of dreams as the law of karma. Ever heard of this law of karma? What is the law of karma? The law of karma is, as you sow, so shall you be. 
whatever your action is, to that there can be a reaction. If you do a good deed, you will be rewarded. If you do a bad deed, you will be punished. And who will determine if the deed is good or bad? You. Very simple. The law of karma explains how we create dreams according to actions. Therefore, we have closed our options by a very large series of actions in the past. Both in the wakeful state and in the sleeping state, we have created such a large series of actions and experiences that based upon them, we are able to now predict that such a large number of other dreams will take place of certain patterns. So this is not an arbitrary pattern that is taking place. This life is constituted as a package of reaction to past actions. But how do we know that past actions are creating this life and this life is not creating new actions? I remember the first time I spoke in Detroit, Michigan in the early 60s in this country on the subject. A lady walked up to me at the end of the lecture and she said, May I shake your hand? I said, Why not, ma'am? Why are you so hesitant and afraid? She said, I don't want to pass my karma to you. I do not know in what sense karma is understood in this country. Even today I don't know fully. Different people give me different definitions. Some people say karma is something. So mysterious. I saw a cartoon where the other day an Indian yogi with a big bowl and cups in his hand pouring out from the bowl as a serving karma cola. I really don't know. But I had to tell that lady, I said, ma'am, you must shake my hand. I have come all the way to satisfy this previous karma. You have come from nowhere. If you don't shake my hand now, I have to be reborn to come and shake your hand. Please, please release me. I said, ma'am, how do you know that your shaking hand with me today is in repayment of the past or is going to create a new debt for the future? So, Adama has both elements. When we are born, we are born with a destiny, a package of destiny, which is based upon previous experiences, previous actions. Previous karma. That package we call in the Sanskrit pranabdha. Pranabdha means the destiny which you have brought with you as a package from the past. We often refer to it as fate. This is in my fate. You hear people say that. This is written in my destiny. What does it mean? It means it is predetermined by our own actions which we brought with us when we went to sleep in the wakeful place this time. What about the first life? Supposing the soul has come into this universe of time and space for the very first time, where it had no karma at all, then what happens? Then we refer to a very peculiar state of a higher wakefulness about the future, about the earth, which we refer to as a causal. You know causal? What is causal state of consciousness? Causal state of consciousness is that which causes everything. What is the causal state? Let me explain briefly these three states to be able to answer this intervening question. We are now in what is called the physical wakeful state. It is physical. Why do we call it physical? Because the great law of physics prevails. The greatest law being gravity. It is only in this level that gravity operates very heavy upon. I saw a movie called Back to the Future. Anyone saw seen that? Back to the Future. A, a young boy goes back. 30 years, from 1985 to 1955. And when he goes back, he talks all the time, this is heavy stuff, this is heavy stuff. So the scientists ask him, in 85, things must have become very heavy, any changes in gravity. The fact is, in this physical world, we are controlled heavily by gravity and similar laws, connected with gravity. Our bodies are tense, matter is tense, it is held down to planets, it cannot fly, locomotion is slow, mobility is low, density of the vehicle itself is such, we cannot see anybody else's mind, we are all hiding inside. Even our own light we cannot see. The shining light of consciousness cannot be seen when we wear the physical body, it is so dense and close. It is a dark state to be. This is called the physical death. When we awaken to a higher level of consciousness, which we call the astral level, what happens then? When we wake up, we find we never had the physical body there. These are not real. Just like we create dream body, to go into the physical state of consciousness, we create physical body. That our real bodies which have gone to sleep to create the physical body 
I'm not physical at all. They are so nice. They are not covered by the law of gravity at all. They can smile freely. They can see through each other. That there are no secrets to keep. There are no doubts and misunderstandings. Because nobody can think without everybody else knowing what we are taught. Telepathy is the most common means of communication. And you are full of light. You don't need to put on these lights to see things better. There is an utter darkness. Everybody shines and can be seen. Not only persons can be seen, things can be seen. That is the act of light, of faithfulness. Now that is not something of a threat for somebody to make. That is our state of wakefulness, each one of us. If we awake at this moment, we will find we are actual self automatically. Went to sleep there in order to get this physical experience. That light body, full of light and light weight, with no weight at all, no gravity at all, is our natural astral state. What have we lost in going to the astral state? Nothing but our weight. Because we have all the senses intact. We can see, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch. Not like this, more than this, more than this physical body. Our perception through senses become more acute, more powerful in the astral body than in the physical body. And yet we are freed from the weight of gravity. Therefore the astral body is a much more convenient vessel to be in for fulfilling human desire. A person has a desire in this world. I want to study chemistry. A new type of chemistry which analyzes the nucleus of new substances we've just found. But there is so little literature. Equipment is not enough. Such a person, if he wakes up into the astral form, still continues the same research. Chemistry of the nucleus, of substance, of matter. Right there. Nothing is slowed down. That world is not some weird outside world unrelated to this one. Indeed, what is happening there is affecting us here. And what happens to these bodies here is a reflection of what is happening there. But that is real. This is created within the mind of the astral mind. The astral mind creates the dream called the physical world and the physical life. This karma or pralabdha or destiny or fate which it brings here is carried from astral body to astral body. From one physical body through the astral body to the next physical body. But then, about that, we can awake further. How do we know where we end sleeping and waking? If this is a dream, astral world is a real awakened world, we may wake up to an astral world and say, are we still sleeping in a still higher body? If we awaken, if we are nudged by a person who is awake in a still higher form, which we call the causal form, he nudges us and we wake to a form which does not even require self protection. You don't require to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, to smell, to do things, to see anything. You can have direct experience of things, of people, of persons, of life without having to split it up into seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling separately. For the first time we realize that this division of self-perception is utterly artificial. It is not necessary for consciousness. We don't need to split this experience in order to know what lies there. But we got so used to it because this was the infirmity, the grossness of the lower astral body. What about the other body then? What else happens when we shift to higher levels of wakefulness and we are actually awakened by an awakened friend? The master. The, chief, the master is no one else but an awakened friend. When he awakens us to a higher form, what do we find? One of the big changes we find is change in the nature of time. Because time holds all the events. I mentioned to you earlier that 14 minutes in the wakeful state can create a dream of 60 years. Similarly, the time of the astral stage can be quite different from the dream world of the physical state that it can create. Similarly, the time world of causal state is totally different. Now, what is the difference? In the physical world, time flows only in one direction. It is like a unidirectional single space typewriter. You type with single space, like that time is ticking. Today has come. What's the date? 20th. What will be the date tomorrow? 21st. What's the date yesterday? 19th. And 27th, 23rd. It goes on. What happens now it is? Quarter 9. What will be after an hour? Quarter to 10. It will never happen any other way. So much are we bound by this experience of time running in this particular way in the physical level of consciousness 
At this time, waiting for my friend, who I love dearly, and I'm waiting for a long time. She told me she'll be here at nine o'clock. And I waited more than an hour, and she returned. What's going on? Then he the watch. He says, only 15 minutes past. Do you know, I am so ridden by the nature of time in the physical world, I'll accept my watch and not my feelings. <laughs>